So bubbles don't occur in one phase. Bubbles always occur in multiple phases. You have, for example, plasma and liquids, plasma and gases, uh, uh, gases and uh, liquids. Uh, yeah. When the bubble touches a solid part of the bubble band boundary is constituted by solid surface. So it needs not be only one surface that the uh, sound. Okay? Uh, bubbles attain a spherical surface due to surface tension, but often oscillate to irregular shapes. Okay? Often when bubbles uh, oscillate, uh, they don't take long to collapse. They float around due to buoyancy or fire. They oscillate in liquids. Up, uh, upon collapse, they generate a lot of pressure and heat, and sometimes even light. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, there are maybe trillions of types of bubbles. I will talk about some major uh, things we see. Uh, water, uh, air bubbles in water. Water bubbles in air, which are? Does anyone know what this is? A liquid one, right? Okay. So water half submerged, this causes a form. Okay. A soft solution, we have a uh, thickness of uh, liquid inside the bubble, and then a very strange kind of bubbles, uh, sometimes called white air. Uh, these uh, these differ from cavity flow. I will not go through this. I will I will also sadly sadly I will not consider the soft bubbles. Okay. But I will go through uh, these two and this one in particular. I will the uh, whole uh, whole talk will be about this particular problem. So typically, a bubble is a pocket of gas or vapor encapsulated in a liquid. Uh, there are suspended bubbles which are liquid. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, suspended bubbles like soft solution, surface bubbles, pockets of air partially submerged in liquid. These are like foam. Okay. Uh, and in contact with the soft surface of the air, a droplet, which is this one, droplet is a globule of solid liquid surrounded by air. Okay. So why why do I want to discuss bubbles? <coughs> bubble mechanics is an interesting interdisciplinary field involving hydrodynamics, phase transitions, partial diffusion equations, and potential theory, heat and mass transfer, etc. Bubbles are abundant and ubiquitous in our daily lives. A lot of applications we can find in medicine and uh, <coughs> engineering equipment and such, and even experimental physics. They are particularly strange and peculiar. Uh, often, when a, when a phenomenon is uh, uh, often when a phenomenon has these strange fe uh, features, and uh, practically uh, we we look up everything we find <coughs> everything about it. Okay. Uh, the physical preliminaries, I will go through these one by one, okay? So first of all, I want to talk about the first and second laws of thermodynamics. If we have a total amount of energy, no energy is lost or uh, created out of thin air, uh, to say, okay? So we have, for example, in a cow, we have, a chemical, we have chemical energy uh, contained in uh, gas. It, uh, uh, it is burned to make a kinetic energy and a lot of it is dissipated in thermal energy. When all, when all the chemical energy uh, is lost and kinetic energy, uh, when the cow stops, uh, the thermal energy has, uh, has reached a maximum, meaning all of the uh, heat is dissipated throughout. Okay? Uh, the second law of thermodynamics is that a lot of systems, uh, not a lot of systems, all systems are uh, to a degree chaotic, okay? And they get destroyed because of how uh, how things happen. So uh, kinetic energy turns to thermal energy. Thermal energy does not does not fully go to uh, kinetic energy. If we, if we go from thermal energy to kinetic energy, maybe we, we can get as much as a as a theoretical engine called the Carnot engine can give us. The Carnot engine is uh, supposedly the uh, the most efficient device in the universe. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the liquid state uh, before beginning. So imagine I have a hockey table, okay, and I put pucks of uh, uh, the pucks. Uh, the uh, uh, how do I say it? the things I mean the uh, the uh, 
with this foot. Okay, sorry. So if I pack uh, all, uh, if I pack all uh, pots in such a way that uh, they can't move a lot, and I put a beam of, uh, put a uh, signal in the middle, the signal can give me for a detector hit. The signal can give me where the puck is moving. If it was packed in the air puck is filled, it cannot move much. Okay. So from the solid state, we see that uh, the pucks don't cross over the boundaries. Okay, they're uh, stable. Here. What's the most stable uh, configuration for solids? Is that the centers form a uh, diamond. Okay. For liquids, they are less packed. Okay, and you can see they don't stay in uh, the same places. Liquids can, liquids don't always go through, but they can move through each other. Okay, viscous terms uh, prevent uh, these and uh, try to. Uh, uh, make them hard for them to cross, but they will cross eventually. And they are much more chaotic than uh, solids. Okay? We can consider a liquid to be an intermediate phase between a gas and a solid, but both phases share a lot of similarities with liquids. So when I say there are different phases of matter, uh, states of matter, uh, there are maybe infinite states of matter, okay? But these are the ones that show maybe in uh, uh, the, the clearest ways to see them. <coughs> so uh, liquids, gases, and uh, solids all share a lot of uh, uh, similarities, okay, with liquids. The uh, solids and gases, sorry. The density of the liquid remains relatively constant, like the solid, unlike the gas. So if we have a, uh, so if we have a, uh, uh, so if we have a container for a gas, and we expand the container, we put, a, we put the gas in a bigger container, the density would be lessened, but not for liquids, okay? Like solids, solids share the uh, similarity with liquids. Uh, liquids share the similarity with solids, sorry. Molecules in a liquid can flow past other molecules, depending on the viscosity, typically like the gas and unlike the solid, okay? Uh, liquid atoms, uh, atoms in a liquid uh, try to move together, okay? They try to move uh, in an ensemble and not, not uh, uh, each one individually like the gases. There's a difference between the terms uh, vapor and gas. Uh, if I increase the uh, pressure, a vapor will become a uh, liquid. If I increase the pressure on a gas, it might not be a liquid. Okay, I will go through this in a phase transition. So a vapor condenses in a liquid or sublimates into a solid. Upon increase, uh, upon increasing the temperature, one of the gas simply becomes pressurized. Okay. So uh, when we look at elasticity and fluidity, there's uh, something we have to put in our minds. We typically uh, we typically see uh, solids as, as elastic, and uh, liquids and uh, gases are fluid. Uh, for example, if I, I can I can bend this and it will return to shape. Okay, so this is elastic force. Everything is trying to return as how it was. But uh, but uh, what, what I'm saying uh, this I'm I'm tricking you actually. I'm not not looking at the time at which this starts to return to shape. So let me be the time, uh, the typical time for the migration of a solid uh, a molecule from one position with the structure of substance to another position. So if we look at uh, here, we want to look at when this will go past this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. Okay? And in, uh, in, uh, in liquids, uh, sorry. And, and the Tf is the typical time associated with the applied force. So we are applying the force and we're seeing how the atoms migrate, okay? And, uh, and if, if, if something is elastic, uh, it is elastic because uh, the applied force, the time for the applied force, is much less than time for uh, the migration, okay? For fluids, it's the opposite, okay? Uh, I don't know why it's okay. Let me let me show you. Uh, this means <laughs> this means in uh, uh, under uh, super, uh, uh, subsequent. Okay. The chemical potential is a thermodynamic force, and differences in the chemical potential drive the flow of particles from one place to another. Okay. So if we have the uh, chemical potential, 
we can see that it's like uh, it's like a driving force. For example, uh, when we have something heated up, the heat tries to go from uh, higher temperatures to lower temperatures. The chemical potentials tell uh, the chemical potentials tell us where particles go from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Okay. In a pure liquid surface tension is the macroscopic manifestation of the intermolecular forces that tend to hold molecules together uh, to prevent the formation of particles. So surface tension tells, uh, surface tension tells uh, particles that, okay, your liquids stay here, uh, stay away from gases. Gases stay in one place, liquids stay in another place, solids stay in, uh, solids, stay, solids stay in another place. Uh, the liquid pressure P, Exterior to a of radius R would be related to the interior pressure of PB and the surface tension S. Okay? So if you have a, uh, the pressure of a bubble minus the pressure outside, uh, here it's supposed to be an infinity, infinity means the whole liquid. It will be 2S over R, meaning, uh, meaning the surface tension over the radius of the bubble. Okay? We might know in general. We might know in general three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. But matter can also exist in other phases, such as plasma for gases, a simple fluid for some liquids and gases, and the magnetic phase for solids, etc. So the idea is that matter is matter, okay? But what I see from atoms, from molecules, in a big ensemble tells me uh, how small uh, effects uh, through statistical uh, means become uh, observe, uh, th something we observe. For example, in liquids going crossing each other, uh, we can't see atoms go, uh, going up, we can't see atoms like this. But what we see is the uh, manifest uh, phenomena, which is liquids. Okay? So upon adding up a lot of things, we can see the uh, manifest uh, macroscopic object. I will go through this very quickly. Suppose you have a, a molecule of water. If you uh, hit, okay, and, and a liquid, okay. If you increase, uh, the, uh, if you decrease the pressure, it might turn into a vapor, okay. If you decrease the temperature, water. If you decrease the temperature, it will turn into a solid. Uh, solids and liquids and gases can uh, coexist in the total point, and further than the uh, critical point, if you increase the pressure of a gas, it will not condense, it will not become water. Okay? Of course, sometimes uh, water can go, uh, liquid water can go through this, we call this superheat. So, for example, water can uh, boil in uh, 120 Celsius. Or 130 Celsius. I don't know the uh, upper limit, but it can far exceed 100 Celsius to boil. We can see also water on pressures. That's, if, you, if you look at this diagram, you can. This is diagram for water. Okay. If you look at this diagram, you can understand uh, where the phases of matter can exist. For some matter, uh, for example, the iron, we can see, uh, we change the pressure and temperature to something else, we can see magnetic phenomena, especially when we decrease the temperature. Okay? Vibration, uh, this is supposed to mask the equation, but uh, the equations are all altered. So, uh, we, we, we tend to see three kinds of motion, okay? Typical particles have three kinds of motion. The first is translational, so I move uh, from one place to another, okay, or from here the y axis or the z axis up, but I can't find, okay. So uh, if you look at uh, another form, is rotation, okay. Something can rotate, but it's not translating anywhere. And something can vibrate, okay. It's going from one place to another, but it's not moving in a general sense to other places. So this is totally destroyed by n. So I have uh, half m uh, b squared, b y squared, b z squared. If we look at uh, this is completely changing. Yeah. No, it's, it's subscript and superscript, right? Yes. Because it's my math. Ah. I'm, I'm using that. <laughs> uh, this this would be very very problem for maybe later equations. 
But this is, I, I, I will not explain uh, these equations. These are just for showing you what happens, what kind of motions are present. So this tells us the translation of motion. Okay. These are the translation of motion. This is the energy, kinetic energy of uh, the uh, particle. This is the rotation in motion. We are looking through two uh, rotational axes. Okay? One like this, so the particle is going like this. And one like this, so the particle is going like this. They can go through this at the same time. For example, like uh, uh, a lot of planets do. And the last bit is vibration, so it tells me how things vibrate. But the vibration I'm doing is just uh, like so you can see here, these are vibrating, okay? These are vibrating, but generally they're not moving to other places. It's like the energy is moving and not the particles themselves. There's a certain place where the, other, where the particle is not even free to work, uh, to uh, move and it can go, uh, it can oscillate through one point, okay? Uh, I will go through this very quickly. A shock wave, occur, a shock wave occurs when a disturbance in a medium with speed w travels faster than the speed of sound vs in that medium, okay? So we see the Mach number. This tells us what the speed of the particle is, and uh, sorry, the speed of the disturbance is, over the speed uh, in uh, sound. If we have n bigger than one, the disturbance is supersonic. I think in bubbles, uh, it can reach maybe 2.2, which means uh, uh, there's a big explosion that happens, but in a very small scale. Shock waves convert kinetic energy into thermal energy, and therefore when shock waves occur, the system loses energy to its surrounding at faster. That means, for every reversible engine, we need to eliminate shock waves. In a reversible engine, we try to work in such a way that if I go forward, I can go backwards, okay? Uh, even with some energy loss, but not uh, a lot of it, okay? Uh, if I want to make my engine as reversible as pos possible, I need to uh, remove more shock waves. Hmm? Okay. Uh, you want to reverse, right? So you don't want to supply energy to return to that state, right? Yeah. Okay, so, you have, so the, idea, the idea is that I have uh, thermal energy, uh, sorry, I have chemical energy, I want to make it kinetic and uh, mechanical energy, but I don't want to do it in such a way that I have to supply energy all the time. I want just the supplied energy, I can uh, go back and forth. Of course, all mechanical, uh, all, all, all mechanical systems in the world uh, dissipate energy. This is the second law, as you see, as we saw before. But uh, the idea is that if I want to return back in uh, time, at least in the energy I save, I can go back forward. But uh, even when I go, uh, a lot of uh, some energy will be dissipated. Some energy will be dissipated until it stops completely. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, infamous Navier Stokes equation. So, but so, so shock wave dissipates energy uh, such that uh, reversibility is. Uh, yes. Uh, mm. it's not possible. Yeah. So I, I think I think uh, Mark would massacre this equation, but but let's see. Uh, so assuming we have a Newtonian fluid, the Navier Stokes equation for motion is the radiation, and the other wavy direction is uh, the relative of Newton second law. So when, for example, uh, we see Newton's second law. Okay? Uh, when we see Newton's second law, I'm just saying that momentum, uh, the change in momentum here will appear as the change in momentum here, okay? So how much, uh, sorry. This will be problematic later. <laughs> okay, so this is R not here. Uh, the change in uh, momentum here appears the change in momentum here. Okay. Uh, I don't think this is much much harder to read. No. Okay. Uh, Uh, the first one, which was initially green, the points are in an incompressible fluid. Okay? 
So just like temperature, uh, pressure is a, uh, let's say, thermodynamic force. When we look at uh, force, force is minus uh, d, d x over dx, OK? Uh, so whenever we have something that is a differential of uh, energy, we call it a thermodynamic force, okay? But this, uh, and, and, and thermodynamic force, uh, they, not, they need not be in uh, position. Um, and let, me, let me show you why uh, uh, pressure and temperature are thermodynamic forces. This is because temperature is del uh, u, or what, del uh, s, yeah. Uh, then you have del S with the, the uh, volume uh, constant and with all uh, all particles, all kinds of particles constant. So if I keep them like this, I will have uh, this uh, uh, this uh, temperature. Uh, so let me go through this very quickly. can now go quickly through uh, to quantum mechanics. First of all, I want to consider nucleation. Nucleation is the physical process whose end result can manifest in a new thermodynamic phase. Okay? So, in, in, in a liquid, we don't see uh, bubbles. Uh, some things happen a change of temperature, pressure, etc. And then we see uh, something manifests. So uh, this, is, uh, this is nucleation. Uh, the, the, uh, how, how do I say it? When, when something new happens, I can see it, okay? Uh, the thermal motions within the liquid form temporary microscopic voids that can constitute the nuclei necessary for what turn of growth to microscopic bubbles. So we look at two things, homogeneous nucleation and uh, heterogeneous nucleation. Uh, homogeneous is like something that happens uh, when, when, for example, uh, okay, so we have a liquid and then there's a rupture. So there's a splitting in the liquid and a bubble uh, exists there. More common is heterogeneous nucleation, where rupture occurs in the sites of major weaknesses at the boundary between the liquid and the solid wall of the container of small particles suspended in the liquid. So, for example, if we have a uh, liquid, the pressure here is much different than the pressure there. So, uh, we see a cavity here, okay? So, this is very small. This is in maybe one uh, micro uh, micrometer. It expands to maybe 10, 100 micrometer, and we see a bubble. Okay? In heterogeneous nucleation, there's a, uh, for example, a, uh, a something in the water, and the uh, vapor and gas around it uh, tend to uh, become a nucleus for uh, the bubble to expand. Sometimes, even when I have a glass of water, or, 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 Okay, this is uh, this is something uh, neat I uh, have. So, in, uh, yeah. 
In the bulk liquid, this would correspond to a fractional volumetric expansion, so we have an expansion here about one third. Okay. The application of constant tensile strength. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me go through uh, this. Okay. The general, in general, in general, uh, for water, let's say, the pressure that will watch on the liquid that will create this cavitation bubble. Is uh, almost minus three times ten to the uh, nine, uh, or t uh, ten to the ten. When I say minus uh, pressure, I mean uh, stress. Okay, which is minus uh, the opposite of pressure. Pressure like inside and not uh, pressure like inside and not outside. Cap cavitation is the process of obtaining a liquid by increase in pressure at roughly constant liquid temperature. Okay, so. We see two things that result in bubbles, and they are very similar, cavitation and boiling. What differs is that in cavitation, the, the, what changes is pressure. So constant temperature, there's a place where pressure differs, and it, uh, and it uh, mitigates this uh, creation of the... Uh, can I discuss something or... Can we, discuss something? Can we go afterwards? Because I really don't have time. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I, I, after, after this? Okay. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. But please keep that thought. Keep that thought. Uh, okay. So when we. Sorry, again. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. So in boiling, the uh, temperature changes, but the pressure is uh, almost. Yeah. Is roughly constant, okay? The mechanics of cavitation and boiling is sim are similar uh, as in both the nucleus expands into a bubble, but the thermodynamic paths that precede the formation of vapor differ. Okay? Uh, if the temperature is uniform and the bubble contains only vapor, which means there aren't many gases inside, only the liquid, we talked a bit before about phase transitions. So only the liquid that changed into a uh, gas uh, of water, okay, which is vapor, uh, the internal pressure will be saturated vapor pressure. Okay, the exterior liquid pressure. This is very important. The exterior pressure uh, equals uh, the gas pressure minus uh, the vapor saturated vapor pressure minus two S over R, which we talked about the surface tension. Okay. 
But then I can ask you the questions later on. Okay. No, okay, okay. So, so, so. so um, what happens is that the, the pressure inside the bubble is much different than the pressure outside, and, and the surface tension is pushing at the liquid, uh, the surface here is like pushing the water, okay? Water is moving in volume. So it's moving it, this is causing the cavitation, uh, the rupture, sorry, of the liquid medium. The exterior liquid pressure is maintained at a constant value, less than P, and the bubble is to grow and eventually collapse. For a given vacancy, uh, with a maximum size of put the way this RC. Okay. The uh, tensile strength of the liquid, delta PC, is given by, this is very important, okay? We will see this in the uh, linear density equation as well. So we can, uh, I, I will skip this, maybe this is a bit. Okay, so we have to also look at the uh, energy deposited, like for example, energy is given here, okay? An increment of energy must be deposited in the body of the pure liquid in order to create a micro bubble of critical size of C. The micro bubble of critical, uh, a nucleus has to achieve RC in order for us to see it as a bubble. Otherwise, it will just be a nucleus, not uh, not uh, a thing as anything more on top of it. Assuming that the nucleus is in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings, the energy deposit consists of, consists of two parts, okay? So first of all, this and this. Uh, this is the radius, uh, sorry, this is the uh, amount of water, uh, the surface that pushes on, and this is the amount of uh, water pushed, sorry, the opposite, the opposite. So this is a sphere of uh, gas, uh, the vehicle of gas pushing uh, at the water, and this is from the surface tension that's uh, trying not to not to be impaired uh, uh, by water. Okay, so this gives us power three pi r squared. Uh, then C. Okay. This is the uh, sorry. This doesn't appear well. This is the third radius. Okay. Otherwise, no one would be. Uh, uh, I think I think we should skip this, but but um, maybe 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 if you took uh, in kinds of thermodynamics, this would be uh, but, but, uh, something you can enjoy. But we look at this as the probability of the system taking effect, and not just them taking effect. We can't look at anything and say that if I have such and such conditions, this will happen. We have to see the probabilities because there are a lot of things we don't know happening beneath that we can't. Uh, we can't immediately uh, tell, okay? I'll go through this. Okay, so, yes, yes, I, I, I remember, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I just remembered, yeah. And uh, for this case, uh, this is something interesting, okay? So, uh, in, uh, uh, Germans discovered something very interesting in uh, because uh, Germany serves uh, beer, okay? So they discovered that in glasses that have scratches or uh, dents or anything, in these dents some bubbles are trapped, okay? And upon putting water or liquid or, uh, for in this case, beer, a lot more bubbles, uh, are, uh, more from bubbles are uh, excluded because they escape from uh, these parts, okay? So for the first case, we can see a flat hydrophobic surface. So some surfaces, because of uh, intermolecular forces, don't like water, don't like some liquids, okay? So they try... This is the only place touching the uh, 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 liquid and not this. So they are trying to push away the liquid as much as possible. But in, in this case, and only this is touching, uh, only this is... Uh, uh, secluded, a lot of this is uh, in contact with the water, okay? Case uh, 3 may be the most interesting. Fluids like water or air love surfaces and generally stick to form a membrane around the surface. When pouring fluids in a container, a small amount of air found uh, before, the, uh, before the cracks try to stay there. Such cracks are crevices from nucleation sites, okay? Form nucleation sites. So these are called nucleation sites. 
uh, I'm not changing the pressure or something, uh, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of things that happen, bubbles can escape from here and float to the top. This is, uh, this is maybe uh, uh, the equation here. I'm, I'm very, very sad to say we're not, uh, you will not see it very well, but it's uh, one of the most beautiful equations in uh, engineering, or uh, not engineering because I don't have engineering, but in physics, I mean. Okay? So, consider a spherical bubble of radius R of T in an infinite domain of liquid with temperature constant. So, if we look at the uh, temperature and pressure, they are constant everywhere except at some place here. Okay? So, uh, the temperature is constant, the pressure is controlled to regulate the growth and collapse of the bubble. I will tell you later how we can control, uh, how we can track or uh, control the growth of uh, collapse of bubbles. Although they are very hard to do, but uh, they have been done before. Okay. Okay. Uh, T infinity and P infinity are the pressure and the temperature of uh, the gas in the whole liquid. Okay. Or let's say uh, far into infinity, we are uh, supposing uh, an infinite uh, uh, was a lot of liquid. Uh, okay, the, <laughs> the equation is a uh, massacre, okay? But, uh, okay, suppose you can use this. <laughs> uh, we have here P can be minus. P, okay, over, over, okay. The instantaneous tension on the driving term determined by the conditions far from the bubble. So far from the bubble, these things tell us uh, how this uh, will start or behave. Okay? P infinity is the pressure far from, far from the bubble. Uh, PV, PV is the vapor pressure of the liquid. So there's a pressure uh, Pressure outside and pressure inside uh, trying to go out. This is the pressure outside trying to push inside the uh, liquid, okay? So we're seeing the difference just uh, here, okay? Rho is the density of the liquid assumed to be constant when compressibility is ignored. So all, maybe all matter in the universe are comp uh, is compressible, but how compressible they are? Uh, gases are much more compressible than liquids. Liquids are uh, not generally compressible. I mean, the compressibility is very low, and the solids are uh, hardly uh, compressible. Okay, so I can't change uh, the volume as much as I want. In liquids, I can do this, but not very, uh, very slightly, because like I showed you in the uh, pack model, uh, we can squeeze uh, the. Uh, the uh, liquid uh, a bit more because they are not arranged like a diamond shape, okay? We said that the diamond shape is the most uh, packing you can, you can get in a medium. The second term, the thermal term, determined by how much the bubble temperature, Tb, departs from the remote liquid temperature, infinity. This is important for the growth of collapse, collapse rate of the bubble. So the temperature inside the bubble, the temperature outside tells us how what what would behave. Okay. Okay. So we need to put this. If there is no contaminant gas, contaminant gas, this should be zero. Okay. But uh, this is just uh, wishful thinking. It's impossible to remove all the gases from a liquid. Impossible. So what we see here is... Uh, oh, no, sorry. This is... Uh, this is one thing. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, okay. Uh, so we have P G zero over rho sub L uh, of the uh, 
So the effects of a contaminant gas, which is uh, what is assumed, there will be no mass transfer, okay? Uh, PG0 is the partial pressure of a contaminant gas, different from this. We showed you before in uh, the uh, chemical potential energy why this differs, okay? So we just can't see everything as the same thing there, uh, but uh, gas particles know each other, okay? Yeah, but but uh, but uh, it's also because of phase transitions. You saw, uh, sorry, uh, because because of the uh, because of thermodynamics, we know that uh, everything t uh, changes in terms of other things. Okay, so we can't just say the partial pressure of the atomic gas. We have to look at the radius of the bubble, which means the volume, okay, and the temperature throughout. Uh, okay. Yes, but not uh, uh, the pressure at infinity, the uh, liquid. I mean, I mean, just not of the body, the temperature is the same to the temperature of the liquid. We're assuming that the temperature very near the bubble, very near the bubble is different, okay? But uh, the temperature throughout is uh, the same. This is a uh, very idealized equation. Yeah, and collapse, I will tell you just a bit about how this differs in the real world. Uh, the inertial term, okay, the acceleration due to the total force and the bubble wall displacement point in the same direction. This survives from the Navier stocks and also this one uh, uh, survives from the Navier stocks, the viscous term, okay, which we explained in uh, the uh, Navier stocks equation. The idea here is the kinematic viscosity of the suspended fluid. So, uh, viscosity is like <coughs> uh, friction in uh, liquids, okay? So, liquids are flowing in bulk and they're interacting with everything else, so there's a lot of friction here. Finally, the surface tension which we talked about, term as the effects due to, to, due to the surface tension, okay? So, this guy, uh, Riley, has made all of this. And plus it added this and uh, the viscosity term, okay? Uh, but sadly, the Rayleigh really test equation does not explain how the bubbles collapse, okay? Bubble collapse produces noise, shock waves, and material damage that is caused by the high velocities, pressures, and temperatures that may result from that collapse. Uh, Let me let me go through this quickly, okay? Because I think we're out of time. Um, collapsing bubbles do not remain spherical, which means that uh, much of the Rayleigh test equation needs to be adjusted here. I will not go through the adjustments, okay? Because it would be very hard. Departure from sphericity, so we assume it was a sphere, huh? Departure from sphericity can diffuse the focus of the collapse and reduce the maximum pressures and temperatures that might result, okay? Many factors, including the diffusion of gas from the liquid into the bubble. So a lot of the liquid around can become vapor that enters the bubble. From the liquid into the bubble and the effects of uh, liquid compressibility mitigate this result. So liquid is actually compressible, which we assumed not in the Rayleigh Classic and in the uh, navier stokes equation. Because they are compressible, uh, once they are pushed, they want to push back, they want to return. And sometimes this uh, causes reentrant jets that collapse the bubbles. Okay? Uh, the Mach number of the collapse uh, is uh, found experimentally to be 2.2, which means this would be a very big explosion, even, even from the size of the whole line. In the final stage of collapse, when the bubble contents are highly compressed by the inertia of the unwashing liquid, it will take microseconds to fission a liquid. So we will need just microseconds for the liquids to pop. Okay? At the bubble center, the temperature and pressure can reach up to 6,700 Kelvin. So this is hotter than the surface of the sun in the bubble from this big, okay? And 848 bars, okay? Uh, Let's hope you don't put, uh, you don't be put under this pressure because this will uh, crush you in the 
Uh, but, but suppose this is in the problem uh, side, okay? A dominant feature of the collapse of many gap of problems is the development of a reinforced jet. Uh, what, what, what do you mean by these numbers? Uh, this means that uh, th they can be at uh, these uh, numbers with and, they can't and, and remaining uh, no. without collapse, yeah? Very, very near collapse at time. Oh, okay. yeah. and, uh, before collapse, uh, this will happen. Uh, the pressure is, the pressure and temperature are much, much less uh, when the bubble is stable, but the bubbles are not very stable things. Uh, although I will tell you maybe in the term, yeah, uh, uh, there's a chemist in the United States made a bubble survive for maybe 14 years. <laughs> One bubble survived for maybe 14 years. Okay? <laughs> so, so it's not impossible, huh? Uh, so, reinforced jets, the dominant feature of the collapse of many years, okay? And the nearby solid level. Okay, so uh, I, I, won't, I won't be talking about this much. But uh, this is a very strange physical feature bubbles. Bubbles know that other bubbles are uh, present, okay? They don't, they're not conscious about the dynamic. But uh, for example, if you have uh, bubbles here and the bubble in the middle, they will oscillate in such a way and it will all reflect on this one, okay? And uh, because one bubble is here, uh, we have to, maybe, maybe this is, maybe it's only telling you this, but it's, it's very fascinating. Water might go like this, right? But it doesn't go through here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a bubble. So there's a very little amount of water here, but there's a big amount of water here, big amount of water here. Suppose we have a bubble here. This would cause a re-entry jet to collapse the bubble, shut up, okay? Because the pressure of one place is much, much different than the pressure of another place, okay? Uh, this does not exist in forms, though. And yeah, and if a bubble is near a surface, it will tend to pancake. Uh, to say the term. What, what does that mean? It means that this would be elongated and this would be almost uh, hemispherical. Okay? Maybe you've seen it here. Okay, sorry, one second, huh? And that was done. Yeah, maybe you've seen it here where, uh, yeah, this is. Uh, R, uh, D squared R over D T squared from the uh, Navier-Stokes equation. This tells us what happens in the, uh, uh, sorry, okay, uh, here, yeah. So the first one, this tells us the acceleration of the bubble wall, okay. So imagine, imagine a very unstable thing where the acceleration towards happens so quickly uh, you can imagine what happens to the shape of the bubble because not everything will. Uh, uh, a bubble doesn't think, oh, I have to be spherical, and then everything else will happen. No. Uh, if, for example, a reentry jet comes here, uh, this will be much elongated and it will collapse. Okay? Uh, in, the, in the background, you can see the uh, process of uh, collapse here, but uh, I didn't put another picture. Maybe I'll show you afterwards if you want to see. Okay, this is maybe the final bit. I will talk about this very briefly and, and uh, this and applications in it. So, the extremely high temperatures and pressures that can occur in the non condensable gas during collapse are believed to be responsible for the phenomenon known as luminescence, the emission of light that is observed during cavitation from the collapse. Okay? So, so, so you can see that this is real, huh? Real phenomena where bubbles collapse and they emit light, okay? When we do this uh, using uh, sound waves, this is called sonar luminescence, which is, uh, which is uh, how do they say, contradictory because we're saying from sound we get light. And this is wrong, of course. But, but, uh, but the process that sound makes gives us light. So uh, it's uh, light in the long term showing you the, uh, the big flame uh, one you may show. So a single bubble in water could be part and remain stable, okay? And a long bottom glass flask, a flask with pure water from which almost all the gases have been removed. We can put that question, all the gases have been removed, does not mean there is no gas. Which means maybe the water can turn into a gas. You, you saw this one phase transition, okay? Uh, we can put an oscillating voltage across the vessel causing water to vibrate. This will create single vapor bubble at the center of the spherical flask. 
The LED success is only luminescing. Bubble expands to a maximum and then sharply collapses. The collapse is followed by a series of after bounces of decrease and maturing the elasticity of the model. It's like, you know, for example, if you show a, you know, if you throw a tennis ball and uh, it uh, tends to uh, demo, uh, uh, deform. Deform, yes. Sorry, sorry. Deform, yeah. Uh, this, what, this is what happens in the bubble and then it collapses. This is called a salmon huh? It's quite, It's quite interesting. This is a bubble that's collapsed, okay? This is a lot of bubbles, a lot of bubbles here. That, let's say a single bubble are being created and destroyed in such a shown them that you can see it's like uh, tinkering, okay? Um, twinkling, okay? So the final bit, application to nuclear and subnuclear physics. The liquid drop model, okay? In, uh, the liquid drop model, the nuclear physics was based on uh, one kind of bubble which you talked about, which is uh, the uh, liquid drop, okay? Uh, but instead of water, uh, uh, air surrounded by water, it's water surrounded by air. Okay? So the liquid drop, the assumption that the density of the atomic nucleus is roughly constant, this is almost true, okay? The uh, atomic nucleus, uh, we, we don't see the atomic nucleus as a, a, a collection of things, but we see that, for example, in uh, uh, the uh, Binding energy per uh, nucleon is almost A, okay? For all uh, nuclei after maybe lithium or uh, beryllium, okay? So the, the, the uh, binding energy is almost constant. We're trying to uh, simulate a uh, nuclear phenomenon with a uh, classical phenomenon. So we're looking at uh, nuclei uh, as if they're liquid, uh, liquid dots, okay? We could imagine nucleus behaving roughly the same way the const, uh, as the constant density droplet of water behaves. It would have a surface tension that tries to keep the nucleus confined to a certain size. So the nucleus maybe has a size different exponents than you, different sizes of uh, nuclei, but uh, there's an average which is uh, accurate, okay? And uh, under the right conditions, the nucleus can be split. For example, we, we can see in and some uh, nuclei uh, at the boundary, some uh, helium uh, nucleus uh, escapes. This is called alpha decay. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, radioactive decay is even an analogous to uh, evaporate, evaporation at the surface. So the decay is like evaporation. Uh, this have something decay, and we uh, we uh, like it, liken it to. Uh, and nuclear also also get as bubbles do. Okay. Finally, uh, the bubble and cloud chambers. This is uh, I, I think Wilson used to uh, hike through the mountains and then looked behind him and he saw clouds. Okay, the clouds reflected the water droplets. And it uh, maybe formed two kinds of rainbows. Okay, this is hardly to make the uh, cloud chamber. Based on the same idea, what happened is uh, uh, this is a liquid uh, drop, a condensed liquid drop in a cloud. So a cloud is a uh, a cloud is mostly probably mostly in the liquid state, not in the gas state. Okay, so there are little droplets of liquid inside uh, floating around. Uh, they fall at the same uh, uh, acceleration as they are uh, pushed up by the air body, okay, and by, by, uh, yeah, by the air. So what happens is that they stay afloat. And if you have a lot of uh, liquid drops staying afloat, you see a cloud, okay? A cloud goes down if uh, uh, the uh, acceleration there is uh, the speed by which it falls there is zero. So uh, the uh, acceleration there and the uh, air that's pushing it up uh, of the same uh, acceleration. Okay? So, anyway, he invented the uh, cloud chamber, CTR Wilson. In the chamber of air saturated water vapor is made to expand suddenly. The water vapor then condenses, just like you, and so if an electrically charged atom or stream of ions pass through the vapor air mixer, the ions act as nuclear risk drops of water condensed. Okay. So, what happens is that a uh, electron, for example, goes through here. And uh, or, or uh, in the magnetic, if we put a magnetic field, the, uh, the electron will go through there, for example, and we would see a trail of uh, droplets condensing because the air is saturated, 
So it is just an excuse to become one, okay? Uh, to uh, to uh, form dues and uh, condense, okay? So we say we see, for example, a uh, trail of water like this, for example, okay? Or this a beta minus particle and it comes. Uh, this is when a neutron turns to a proton, gives an electron, okay, and the net antenna chain, okay. Uh, The bubble chamber is a uh, modification of the cloud chamber invented by Donald Glazer. Uh, in a bubble chamber, a liquid is superheated, but the pressure separated means that we, uh, uh, it's an, uh, as, uh, like, like I explained before, uh, superheated means that uh, uh, it's, it's further than, for example, 100 Celsius, but it's not boiling still, okay? Uh, we can do that through changing uh, the uh, pressure, okay? But any, any nucleation that happens uh, makes the whole water boil. So uh, we see a phase transition there. In a bubble chamber, a liquid is separated, but the pressure is then suddenly released. If the liquid is extremely pure, then when the pressure rapidly drops, the bubbles may not form the liquid for perhaps 30 seconds or more. So I have 30 seconds when there's no bubbling, okay? What we do with these 30 seconds, as uh, during this period of ionizing particles enter the liquid, they may cause bubbles to be formed, and the bubble trails show the path of the ionizing uh, particles. Well, well, we can see this is in the BE, uh, BC, the uh, big European bubble chamber, okay, which is in uh, CERN. Okay, uh, maybe this is the most interesting thing. This is the thing you don't see. These are the references I went through. Uh, maybe most of them books uh, we studied, but a lot of them books we never uh, looked upon, and uh, especially this one. Almost the whole lecture is taken from this, okay? The Cavitation Book Dynamics, it's, it's very, very interesting. And, and I sincerely wish, I sincerely wish, if you took thermodynamics or statistical mechanics, that you look at this, okay? And uh, thank you. No, uh, the liquid is, uh, for example, uh, here, for example, this, this, this. so uh, a jet, a real jet comes here and collapses the bubble. So this is not, not all cases of bubbles. There are a lot of forms of bubble collapse. Uh, because bubbles oscillated, we didn't show that, uh, uh, the collapse may turn into a normal yeah, so for example, if you have a solid surface, this is the case I talked about. Uh, you don't have much of flow of water here, but you have infinitely uh, the infinity of water here. So the pressure Yes, and so water tends to push it, but it's not pushing on the, uh, the opposite side, and so the uh, real jet collapses the water. Yes, along the axis. Uh, the jets uh, fish uh, the, uh, the bubble. The jets themselves. Because we need the people that have to go on the vertical aspect of show, right and left. Yeah, uh, what, what's happening with the right and left is that the bubble is squeezed. So <laughs> there's a pressure here. The bubble does not remain so it's squeezed upwards, okay? But it does not touch the uh, surface, huh? Uh, it's squeezed upwards and uh, because, like I said, uh, liquids love salts. Okay? Uh, sorry, water, for example, loves salt. So water will not allow the gas to touch the salt. It will force the salt for us. And we have a, a model to describe this in this process. There is it such for us, right? Yes, I, I think I think there's a uh, data. data. He, he talked about this in a model, but uh, it's not very accurate. And uh, some models afterwards will be. I have a book here, I can show you. Who, who Adnan? Who? Uh, who? From nuclear physics. Okay. He, uh, who uh, uh, studied uh, the sun for uh, nuclear reactions? Sun as uh, a gamma, gamma, uh, as uh, a, uh, 
how do I say it, uh, industry, not, not a factory of making uh, uh, atoms. Okay, I'd like to ask about solar renaissance, uh, yes. which is uh, well, it's similar to some uh, to to other uh, forms of uh, of uh, material response to uh, mechanical energies, like uh, piezo luminescence as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I I know little about uh, uh, the response. I mean, the luminescence yes. response. Yes. To, uh, to mechanical energies mm. like uh, s sound, which is sonar uh, luminescence, mm. or uh, mechanical pressure like uh, piezo luminescence. Uh, I, I think I, I couldn't know in, uh, in uh, 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 exactly uh, how is this response to sound yeah. done. Because so, what, what I'm familiar with is uh, the, the, the I mean the foot one, mm -hmm. not that. So how is uh, how was that? So what, what happens is that uh, we saw the uh, plus, uh, really pleasant equation that the universe mm -hmm. is to and everything, mm -hmm. and everyone is happy and such. But uh, <laughs> bubbles are not spherical and they oscillate. And uh, once they oscillate, they oscillate a lot. The temperature increases a lot. The pressure increases a lot, and uh, uh, the gas is uh, not condensable, it means it does not turn into water. But what happens is that they just keep uh, pressurizing. Once they collapse, all of this, the, the uh, re entry water, okay, which is uh, the entry water, which is uh, uh, pressurized and pushed, uh, almost condensed, uh, almost compressed, returns back. And the, water, and the air is heated much, much more now. So more than all the heating here, the water which was compressed is on now rushing in. And this makes uh, a lot of friction that makes uh, light. But it does not come from, it comes from friction. Uh, so it's like a black hole, uh, the picture, where the surrounding comes from the friction from moving. And you see uh, this is the same effect here. Not from electronic emission. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's what they used to think. This is the source of photoluminescence. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is so, that's what they used to think, but uh, it turns out to be like that. Yeah. I, th I think uh, uh, there's a guy called F.R. Young who wrote uh, a book called uh, Solar Luminescence. It's a bit hard, but it's a wonderful book about uh, this effect. Okay? He talks about everything from the beginning. Photoluminescence. Uh, solar, so, solar luminescence, sorry. And I expect that the use of luminescence should be the same. It is uh, the response or uh, the luminescence response to pressure. Mm -hmm. I think it should it, it should be. Uh, I I know nothing about well, piezo electricity, yeah. and therefore I can't. Uh, say, but but I will look it up. Maybe I can talk to you afterwards. Sure. I don't, I know nothing about it. But uh, it's, it's very very fascinating how we can put something in. Right, right. right. Uh, I, th I think it's also in the same. Uh, Afari also did experiments on piezoelectricity. I, I will show you afterwards. Okay. Sure. No, 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 But uh, I wish this <laughs> is not the heaven. This is earth. But uh, but uh, a lot of questions are almost uh, not not almost. Uh, if, uh, in, in, some, in some sense, reversible, but not, not completely reversible. Uh, the, 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 the only issue is that they can't be as reversible as a car engine. That's it. Even the universe can be sort of seen as an engine, and it's even not reversible. That's why you can only plug the ball in time, not backwards. Because, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Maybe a silly joke. Huh? Maybe a silly joke. Yes, 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 say. please. You, you said uh, about the collapse, uh, the, uh, the, the the adjustments made to Rayleigh equations mm. for the case of collapse. Uh, mm. These uh, are these adjustments. I mean, are they there in the literature? Uh, yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. But uh, sadly or happily? Uh, sadly. Happily. Happily? Happily, yeah. The really pleasant, uh, pleasant is adjusted and it has a lot of, uh, uh, it retains a lot of its features. But but uh, you will see uh, the, the equation will not be as unique and as lovely as it is. Yeah, yeah. It be much harder. And even a lot of terms you have to remove and uh, put, uh, for example, uh, another uh, other approximations. Great. 
okay. If, if one is uh, sad for that, maybe uh, it's because when they are in the literature, then there is nothing to research on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, uh, strangely, there are more in it. Uh, I think it's exactly. Yeah. Okay, I think we're done. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.